All right, y'all ready? Everybody ready? Ready? Let's roll. So I know this is a very awkward scene, right? I mean, never before have you seen these two separate factions together standing at one podium. Now, one of the things that we have come to the understanding is recently we've had a discussion about the monuments coming down, where do they stay, do they go, or whatever. So we've been having a heated discussion about this topic. So as Tyler to my right, who is the head of the Successionist Party, we have come to the understanding that even though we agree, disagree on a lot of subjects, we have to make sure that there's no sort of violence that erupts in the city. This is a very touching subject. And when you start talking about the history of slavery and a history of oppression, and you start talking about soldiers and, and, and the Confederacy, there's a lot of emotion that it automatically emits. And in 2015, there was a Klan rally at the State House in Columbia in South Carolina. Now we know they are not the Klan and they have denounced uh, uh, the Klan and other groups that have, you know, are engaging in these activities. They have come out and denounced them and we would not be standing next to Klan members. I would not personally be standing next to a Klan's member, it would be trouble. So what we, what we understand is that in the city of Charleston and North Charleston, right now, it's a hotbed. And a lot of lawmakers and people really don't understand that in the streets, there's a lot of tension. And these young men have been, you know, raising their flag in certain areas, and they've been getting a lot of people agitated and frustrated. We also have been getting a lot of people agitated and frustrated. So what our intentions are today is to let the public know that it's okay to protest. It's okay to have different sentiments and feelings and be strong about what you believe. There's nothing wrong with that. And we urge people to be passionate and we want people to be passionate just as I'm passionate. These young men, these women, we are all passionate. They are passionate about their cause. But nevertheless, what we don't want to see is a situation like Charlottesville, West Virginia that happened here. And we also don't want to see the scene what happened in Columbia, South Carolina at the Klan rally. We don't want to see that replicated here. And we also don't want to see when these young women, are, these men protesting, we don't want to see people get so caught up in their emotions that they drive cars into people and to start shooting people and killing and hurting people. This is something that we want to stay away from. And we know that, you know, as us being in the streets and I'm and me and these young men and women, we're always in the streets, very visible. These men are always in the streets. They are very visible. And we know that if something ever happens to me or something ever happens to him or one of them, we know that that is going to be the tipping point in this city, whether it's the city of Charleston or the city of North Charleston. So, you know, what we want to do is open up a dialogue that is fruitful. You know, we're not going to agree on a lot of things. Like I said, I am one that I don't care about the statue. I want to see the statues down. The statue to me represents slavery, oppression. It, it, it stands for everything that I'm against. However, there is an opposite understanding of that statue that he is going to explain. And what we want to do is at least be able to open up an intelligent dialogue to where we can have people that actually sit down and be able to reason and understand where he's coming from and we're coming from and they're coming from. We want to open up a world to where we can say, okay, let's reason and think about each other's position and we can educate each other on what we believe and then the people can choose and decide what they want to do with the information that's provided to them. And that's ultimately the message that we want to send. So we have agreed that we will abstain from any sort of aggression 
of violence on one another. And we understand also that there is a mechanism of self-defense. So if anybody infringes on these men, they have a right to defend themselves. Just like we have a right to defend ourselves, we all have a right to defend ourselves. So when you begin to trespass on somebody and they're peacefully protesting and you infringe upon their right, then just keep in mind that you are putting yourself in a situation to where the second amendment and self-defense can be used against you. So we want, we want everybody to take that in to mind when we move forward. Like I said, we will continue to speak out. We will continue to go to legislators and speak our peace. They will continue to do what they do. Nobody is compromising their belief system. What I believe I'm gonna believe before I got here and before and when I leave here, I'm still gonna believe what I believe. And he's gonna believe what he believes. But what we wanna do is show that we can have intelligent discourse amongst each other without violence, without bloodshed, and without the things that can happen to, we don't wanna see nobody die and we don't wanna see nobody killed. And that's the mentality that we have today. And that's the message that we want to send. We want to be responsible with our rhetoric because we know that the rhetoric that we use has the ability to incite and inflame the minds and the thought process of people to make them do things that they probably wouldn't have done if they weren't emotionally sparked by words that made them reach out and do something that they normally wouldn't do. So this is what we want to accomplish here. Also, I'm gonna let Tyler speak. I don't wanna take too much time, but we've also said that we would like to sit down and have a debate, an open discussion. And we wanna discuss each one of our positions and why we feel that that symbol and these symbols mean certain things to us. So we have actually challenged each other to a debate, a very intellectual debate, something that is gonna be very telling and very, it's gonna be unlike anything else. But we wanna actually show, you know, the whole city that in the midst of us disagreeing, as I said again, in the midst of that, we still can be civil in our discourse and civil in our actions and still be able to disagree man to man. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is James Bessinger with the South Carolina Cessationist Party. It's a little hard to follow Shakim after a speech like that. Um, he basically said it all. We came to a we came to an agreement last night over a beer that um, we're both hearing on both of our sides. These two communities over opposite sides of this debate that Charleston has every bit of potential to become the next Charlottesville. We, we don't want to see that. Um, I don't want that for anyone on their side. They don't want that for anyone on our side. And the, the only way that we're going to prevent something like that happening is the leadership on both sides to do the right thing and extend a hand of at least peace to one another, not necessarily friendship. Like he said, neither one of our organizations are going to change what we do. Neither one of our organizations are changing our positions on anything. But it's, it's up to us to facilitate that open dialogue, and that's what we're prepared to do. Um, I understand, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk right now about removing South Carolina's Confederate monuments. Um, part of what we've agreed to is that no one is going to, we're not going to encourage and we're going to discourage the illegal activity in our state where this debate's concerned, like what we saw in Durham, North Carolina, where last night, where protesters climbed up and ripped a monument down. If we want monuments down in South Carolina, there's a mechanism for that. We can either get a two-thirds vote in the legislature or you can have the Heritage Act repealed. There's a legal mechanism for that without violence and criminal activity. Um, and that, that's, that's what we're here to, to support and advocate for. Um, we hope that our message is heard by everybody on both sides of this argument and that we have an opportunity to, to make sure that Charleston doesn't become the next Charlottesville. So we've, we've written up a few things just to let you all know exactly what we've agreed on. We have agreed to, number one, facilitate and encourage open dialogue between communities of traditionally opposing beliefs for the purpose of achieving mutual understanding, respect regarding the topic of Confederate flags, monuments, and other symbolism. Number two, to discourage participation in illegal activities in the, purpose of the, in the process of the public discourse and promote the utilization of legal avenues for the accomplishment of our goals and objectives. Number three, to actively discourage and work to prevent violence during this public discourse for the purpose of ensuring the preservation 
of personal safety and personal liberties of the public and their representative organizations. And number four, to discuss, develop, and collaborate on objectives and projects which are beneficial to both organizations to the and to the public at large. Another thing that Mr. Shakim and I discovered in our conversations is that there are actually a lot of things that we agree on, a lot of things that we could work together to accomplish, and that's something else that we're going to look at to help facilitate that understanding. It's a lot harder to hate somebody and want to fight somebody if you're working with them on a common goal. Um, I'm not going to drag this out. We've, we've made our purpose here perfectly clear today. Um, like I said, neither one of us, nobody needs to look at this as either one of us caving in or being leashed by the other. That's not happening. The activities that we perform are going to continue. The activities that they perform are going to continue. We're just agreeing to be civil in this public discourse that seems to be taking the headlines in our city and in our state lately. Um, so with that, I don't really have anything else to say. Um, I'd like to shake your hand. And I, and I want to say something else um, before we, um, I guess, ask questions or whatever. A lot of times it's very hard to confront something that you're unsure of or don't know really that much about. So for me being a black male, when I see a white male with that flag, automatically it triggers something in my head. It triggers rage, it triggers anger, it triggers frustration. I see my ancestors being beat, murdered, and killed. That is the type of imagery that we are accustomed to thinking about when we see those images. And that is why a lot of times these dialogues don't happen because of the emotional baggage that we're carrying. So when I sat down and I talked to James, I realized that he actually isn't, from what I know now, I don't know what he is behind closed doors, but, <laughs> but I recognized, I said, okay, this is somebody that I can talk to. And like I said, once we can put, I wanna be able to use this moment to educate everybody around the state and we need to show that we don't have to replicate the same things over and over again we need to learn from our mistakes and that's something that we hope to gain from this and like i said we just want to let everybody know that you know as a street general and my organization a street general and his organization like i said we know that if something goes wrong, at the first sign of that happening, we know that the whole city could actually go down in flames. If something happened to them while he's flagging, he has a whole organization behind him that'll probably do something. And I have a whole organization behind me that will do something. And we all are our brother's keepers. So we just wanna let it be known that, you know, we're trying to prevent a situation to where to what Dylan Roof, what Dylan Roof actually wanted, we're trying our hardest today to prevent. So we're coming together today to say, okay, through our dialogue and our discussion, we are still shooting down the dream of Dylan Roof of having a race war. So we are still crushing him in defeat today because opposing sides are coming together uncompromisingly, but we are still having dialogue intelligently. Yes, ma'am. Okay, he's actually saying that you um, have a lot of common beliefs and share a lot of common respect for each other. Um, they're asking for the monuments to be placed in museums. What's your opposition to them being placed in museums and preserved there? Well, like I said, that'll come up in the, the debates um, when we talk about our positions on the monuments and such. But I don't, I don't believe that just because I want to preserve the monuments for what they mean to me and what they mean to our side of the debate, that this gentleman and I or our organizations have to duke it out in the streets to settle that discourse. That's that's not what has to happen. So that that that's our point. You know, we we want the monuments to stay for their historical context and what they represent the story of our state. They want them to go because of the way it makes them feel. Maybe we can alter each other's opinion when we finally have an open dialogue. You know, people have been saying for years, we need to sit and talk. We need to sit and talk. We need to have this discussion. No one's done it. We're the first ones to reach out and do it. And if we can do it the right way, maybe nobody's minds will be changed. Maybe somebody's mind will be changed. Either way, whether the monuments stay or whether they go, we still have to share Charleston and South Carolina together. So does this mean that there will be no more flagging movements by your party? Oh no, the flagging is not going to stop. No, that's, that's our main mechanism. It gives us a chance to meet in the streets and talk to people. 
Um, no, the flagging will continue. Um, Mr. Shakim has expressed that he doesn't want the flaggings to stop. He, he, he enjoys the, the, the discourse and the dialogue. Um, so, no, the flaggings won't be stopping. What are the, some of the things that your group has done? We, you know, they're very public. We know what they've done. What, what have you all done? Well, normally our organization, what we do is try to help out issues in the black community through education, feeding the homeless, trying to really you know, figure out how we can stop some of the crime that's going on. We talk about building wealth, uh, providing jobs, education. So that's a lot of the things that our organization does. And we are actually focused a lot on community oriented things and building a better black community here in the city of Charleston and North Charleston. And yeah, that's one thing I can say about Mr. Shakim watching him from a distance. I've never seen somebody that loved their community as much as that man does. So he's an excellent community builder. And I'm, I, I think it's a, a great thing to be able to have someone of his caliber on the other side of this debate. Which one do you approach the other first? I, th I think I, we, we've kind of hit and missed back and forth, you know, so it's really, we just, we just hit and miss back and forth. We had both said on multiple occasions that this needed to happen and neither one of us really pulled the trigger. And it kind of just came into conversation yesterday. So we met and had a beer and that's how all this happened. Okay, the reason why I said I don't want the flagging to stop is because if that's how his organization feels and that's what they want to do, then who am I to tell him what they need to do? So if they're flagging and they said they're going to flag until that flag is put into a museum, then that's what they need to do. So I'm not going to, I don't want to, you know, tell him and try to convince him to stop flagging because I don't want him to try to tell me to stop doing what I'm going to do. And um, for both of you, when you were watching, um, you know, uh, over the weekend, everything going on in Charlottesville, what was kind of your reaction? Did you guys think, hey, is this could be us? That was the first thing I thought. Um, and it... it, it and he can probably tell you for his side, his community, but over the last few days in our community, you know, the Confederate Heritage Defenders across the South, we've seen this bubbling up of, of fear that was, it was even manifested last night and their, their fears were manifested last night in Durham, like I said, when we saw a group of protesters climb up and rip down a Confederate monument. There's absolute panic in our community that that's the type of illegal behavior that we're gonna have to combat now, which is why part of our court is to discourage that type of behavior. Like we said, there's mechanisms for dealing with our monuments in South Carolina. We don't have to resort to that type of behavior, which is only gonna exacerbate the problem and make it harder for us to have open dialogue. You've used the phrase, his community and your community. How do you get to one community? Like this, like this. A mutual understanding, open dialogue, open conversation, and respecting that we're gonna disagree. But I mean, we're already one community. We, we already share this city, this county, and this state. It just, we just happen to be brothers that have a different opinion on a certain topic. It just happens to be a very emotionally racked topic. And it, it's up to us, incumbent on everybody in this city, in this state, to, to find a way to have this dialogue to where everyone's satisfied and no one feels like they were robbed. So what's the end goal? I, th that's, that's yet to be seen. We have different end goals. I mean, he'd like to see the monuments come down. I'd like to see them stay. It may be in the end, some go and some stay. As long as we get to a point where we can live together and respect, he can respect that this flag means one thing to us, I can respect that it means one thing to him and we're not ready to choke each other out over it, I think we've met our end goal. Right. And then another thing, you know, taking down the monument in essence isn't our end goal because we understand systematic racism and systematic oppression is still going to live on even if the flag comes down or even if the monuments come down. So the reason why like I said, I stand on the shoulders of my ancestors. That's what I, that's in my heart. That's what I want to do. So I believe if Denmark Vesey came back to life today and he saw that statue of John C. Calhoun, he'll want it down. So his wish is my wish. And I believe also, you know, one other thing, our two groups and our associations, we are the most outspoken, visible organizations in the community, in the streets. So it really helps to see because lawmakers could do whatever they want to do, but they go home in their nice, comfortable homes and you don't see them. But us, we, you're going to see us in the streets. You're going to see them in the streets. So we're the ones who are going to catch the backlash and the brunt of anything that happens bad in this city if something goes on. We're the ones that's going to be affected, not them. 
I don't have any intention of going into the city council meeting. Um, I think our opinion has been made publicly known to where I don't need to go stand up in front of city council and tell them how we would react if they moved to remove a flag or a monument. Um, I don't know if they intend to go in there or not. I, I don't intend to go in, but there are several people who I would like to find out where they actually stand. One of those is Glenn McConnell. You know, there's gonna, they are we gonna- We need to find out where he stands too. Yeah, so, you know, we, we need to find out where he stands because, you know, for so long, he has been a Confederate defender. And it seems now as though, since he's gotten into the comfort of making his $300,000, $400,000 a year, he has mysteriously hid his position. So we want to find out where Glenn McConnell actually stands because it seems as though he's playing both sides of the fence down at the College of Charleston. So uh, we want to pull the clothes off the emperor and kind of see where he stands. Absolutely. Also, um, Tecklenburg. We, I, I, I want to see where Tecklenburg stands also. You know, as him, you know, selling himself as being a progressive and a liberal for so long before he became mayor, and that's you know. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I definitely, you know, want to see where he stands also. So what this is going to do, especially by us having a dialogue, is going to force more people to come out and say where they actually stand because now we are dialoguing amongst each other so I know where he thinks somebody stands and he knows where I think somebody stands so if there's anybody who's playing both sides of the fence now we're just gonna it's gonna come out and open and you had asked earlier what we had discovered that we had in common one of the main things that was kind of a surprise to him I believe that we shared is the, the position that our organization has against the, the rapid regentrification of the downtown area, uh, the assault on the Marysville area, trying to drive those those poor black folks out of their communities. That's something that our organization is adamantly opposed to. And we've tried to voice that opinion, but we haven't been given the outlet to do that. Um, so there's a lot of things that we could work on together to hold the mayor and city council accountable for. As far as Glenn McConnell and uh, the mayor Tuckerberg, will you be sending formal letters to them to ask them their stance? I have sent formal about? letters to Glenn McConnell, emails back when the, the Bree Newsom incident happened. Um, none of my emails were returned from Glenn McConnell. Um, so we actually plan to have an event at the College of Charleston on the 28th to try to push him out and to, to, to answer these questions. We can't get a response from him through letters, so we'll we'll call him on it. And I believe Mr. Shakim plans to help us with that. Hey, I, I, and calling someone out and, and trying to uncover who you really are, I don't never have a problem with that. <laughs> I'm always be in favor of that. Jonathan, J-O-H-N-A-T-H-A-N, last name Thrower, T-H-R-O-W-E-R. -E you will hear everybody call me Shakim. I spell that S-H-A-K-E-M. Uh, James Bessinger, J-A-M-E-S-B-E-S-S-E-N-G-E-R. Any more questions? All right. Thanks. Take care. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Well, I, I'm weird with the wine. You might like the brown boy. Yeah, this is uh, 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 this day time. <laughs> you know, it's, it's nice to see it's in keeping with the Charles spirit. I'm going to do it for prayer. Can I get your name? Uh, well, well, that's my um, my new name. Let me give you my um, government name. D E M O N D E M O N D McElveen M C B L V D E M. So but if you want, you can put that in court too. So a lot of people don't. Just like him, we got two DMV. We know so much people, we had to get another one. <laughs> You're, you're with the state. Mm -hmm. It's called history. You know, it happened. Charles Black's national history. I mean, we really don't have a name. Do we have a name? Pan-African. Pan-African. Pan -African. Some people are willing to talk to us and find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people just use this presumption of